Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Do you know what this world needs more than anything else? Some people might say a break, peace on earth, goodwill to man. Nah, what we need is a new game engine and that's exactly what we got today. We've got Rogue Engine and this one is pretty cool actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump straight into Rogue Engine itself and then we'll go from there. And the reason I'm doing that is because, well yeah, I'm hiding something from you. I want you to judge this engine on its merits, not on one point alone. Uh, this is cross-platform by by the way, it is unfortunate fortunately not open source, which uh, is something that could change in time. The examples are open source, but right now the author has decided to it, it's not an open source project, and I know that's going to uh, definitely turn some people away, especially in the world that we live in with so many options out there. So this here is Rogue Engine, and you can see here it's got a very, I hate using this word, but Unity-like uh kind of editing environment but uh yeah that's kind of what it got so here we go we got our 3d world going on we got our scene view over here obviously you can customize things to your heart's content <laughs> i don't know how to undo that like so you can drag and drop tabs in tabs can move to different locations and so on uh we've got our world going on right here we got various different things in it so here for example are the ambient light controllers and we can go ahead and add components we'll get back to what components mean in just a second but you can see here uh we got uh our world place stuff here so you know putting things in the world settings for it and then we got the specific details to our ambient lights so if we want to change out the color of our light we could do so right here and we have various different other things here here is our camera again camera has unique settings and we could add components to it as well uh, we could create projectiles in the world our game logic and the game logic here is where you're starting to see a bit of how components work and see here we've got a couple of components space shooter gameplay and play audio this is the heart of this particular example so if i go ahead and run this guy we'll see it in action right here let me just make sure that my sound is turned right down. So we go ahead and do a quick play. As you can see, the, the run logo is, uh, sorry, the run build time is really fast. And it's a straightforward, actually kind of fun shooting wave-based game. And we can just kind of keep going and done. All right, so there we go. Hit escape, exit out. And we can stop our game. So that is the game that is ultimately being created here. And all of the game logic, everything that we see in terms of UI, is being handled here by this, or sorry, not UI, but actual experience. Things happening in the game are being handled by Space Shooter Gameplay. See here, we can add another component here, and we've got a list of things. So what exactly are these components? Well, they are here. And you will notice they are all scripts, specifically TypeScript. Now, if you don't know what TypeScript is, it's Microsoft's... Um, Java sucks, so let's make something better language, and they've done a really good job. I'm actually a big fan of TypeScript. It gets rid of a lot of the JavaScript idiocy. So that is how your logic is done. So for example, here we've got our space shooter gameplay. That is this guy right here. Now, one of the things I have noticed with this feedback to the uh, author or creator, uh, longer file names, uh, extended stuff right here. When you select it, there's no ability to read it, and I don't find any ability to change the layout to a list view or anything, so it makes trying to figure out what files you're dealing with here down kind of tricky. So a little bit of feedback, just in your tooltip or whatever, expand what the full file name is. You find yourself actually having to right-click and go into the show in folders to find these things, and that's kind of tricky. So here is the underlying code here. I also don't know why TS files are being associated with film and TV all of a sudden, but okay. Uh, do I not have Visual Studio Code currently installed? All right, I'm going to open this code in WordPad because for some reason Visual Studio Code is not currently installed. But here you can see, very straightforward, if a little bit ugly and not formatted. Um, you, your code here is in TypeScript, and it uses the traditional game loop approach, callbacks, update, called each frame. Uh, the startup game function is your creation code. Your end game is when things shut down. Straightforward TypeScript code here. Very clean coding style here. And all of your components are written as TypeScript controls. That once you write, you can go ahead and come down here, create your own um, component or JavaScript component. And then literally, you can just add them in. So say, for example, we wanted to add explosions to this guy. You could just literally come up here and we'll tag in explosions. And you'll notice there are exportable properties that are on the code side of things exported out to the engine. So you can uh, then tweak these particular values. So if we want to crank up the volume here or uh, set the, the duration of our explosion to be longer, they can all be done here. We've also got the ability to bring in uh, actual asset values. So here you can see it takes a sound file. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually have a sound effect, probably something here. And then you literally just boom, drop it in. I don't know if that's actually a sound effect file, but that's how you can go ahead and bring particular things in. On top of that, while we were here, let's go ahead and show uh, the fighter here. 
and we'll drop one of these into the game world. Here is a fighter object. I like the other one better. So let's do the SF fighter here. Uh, you notice here, I'm just bringing in a straight FBX object. There it is in the world, overriding our other guy. Straightforward, uh, see right here. All right, so let's select it, move it over a little bit. Now you're gonna notice this guy didn't come in textured which is a bit unfortunate, but we can see here, we can come here, it has a material attached to it, and then all of the textures are available here. Now, this is one of those areas where not having the ability to read the full file name starts getting annoying, because you're trying to figure out, oh, is this a gloss map? Okay, then what's gla, gla, and so on. But we just basically come on in here, we'll trigger that into the uh, texture map right there. Um, and you kind of just keep doing that for all the various different other maps. So here we've got a normal map. We'll drop the normal map in here. And you're seeing it being reflected and updated in real time. As you see, the graphics are quite solid and nice and easy to work with. Uh, you have all of your, your project management is down here, your assets, various things we saw here. We could go ahead and create a new one if we so wished. Uh, various different things here. So if I wanted to uh, create uh, a material or an object or anything, or I could come up here and let's say I want to just add a Taurus knot into my world. I can boom, create one right there. I don't know if that actually created it or not. All right, add Taurus knot. Why am I not getting my Taurus knot? All right, this might just be me. Either that or I have a ton of Taurus knots hidden away somewhere. Okay, I might have found a bit of a bug. But basically, you can add various different meshes and objects right here. Also, go ahead. We can add different light types into our game world, create different cameras. It is pretty much the stuff that you would expect from an engine such as this. It's... Uh, it's pretty powerful and capable, and I'm impressed by it. The only thing that I, again, find a little bit disappointing at this day and age is the lack of open sourciness. Hopefully, that is something that gets addressed in time. Next, roll over here for your skybox. You got the asset manager, so you can control how all the various different things that are in the world. So, for example, your background music. You could preload your background music, and you got control over how long things persist and so on. And then this is accessible in the, from the code side of things. Um, and then we've also got the ability to straight out import in objects. Uh, so you can uh, import in, uh, here we go, import assets right here. Uh, I've brought in FBX files and OBJ files, various different kind of file formats can be brought in that way. Uh, very straightforward and clean in the approach. And if you drill into any of these guys, you're going to find uh, sometimes they get, yeah, so there we go. This, this first jet that we created is still hidden down. There we go. Uh, this guy here, you see it's built up of several different components and they're all kind of brought in. So there's our our rocket, I should be able to just move that individual rocket. So you can see it can either be brought in as a hierarchy or it can come in as a single thing like our uh, sci-fi fighter was here. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the Rogue Engine in a nutshell. So your programming language is TypeScript. You have a full editing environment for creating your levels and testing and running your levels here. Uh, yeah, I guess kind of that's the idea behind it so uh that is the uh hands-on portion of this and now is where i i definitely lose a couple of you but i figured i would save this one till a bit later uh yep this one is running uh, this is actually not running in the browser but this is a browser-based application and did you guess that when you were looking at it this thing was not running in my browser mind you it's actually a, an electron hosted app uh, so it's running in a local application but uh, this is entirely written in web GB, webgl um, so also makes it running it in your browser the end results there uh, it is powered by 3js a really cool 3d framework for uh, webgl in general uh, it uses node.js S on the back end, um, and you can edit your code, your favorite editor or whatever, as I mentioned earlier on, TypeScript or JavaScript for your um, tooling. Uh, you've got, sorry, for your for programming languages. Uh, you got the editor that we saw kind of in action there, uh, component-based. You can create your own code that you can easily reuse, drop them into objects, make it work. Uh, meant for the web, create your WebGL projects in a web environment, use your favorite libraries, and keep control over your build files. Uh, there's a powerful asset manager built in and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So right now this guy is available as an alpha and it is a patron supported project. Now Rogue Engine literally just launched. So this is a new project. Uh, I know again, the fact that it is web is definitely going to turn some of you off. But one of the cool things about being web is that we've got downloads available for uh, Windows, Mac, 
and uh, Linux. So all of your platforms are covered. Uh, if you want to come on up here, we've got uh, the ability. There's an example of this project that we just looked at right here. It is available right here. The source code is available up on GitHub. Um, so while the engine itself isn't uh, open source or anything, this project that we we're working with that you saw, if you want to check this out, this is hosted up on GitHub, so it, it, there definitely is a nice way to get started here. Um, we got decent documentation here. We got some uh, getting started materials, kind of walk you through the process of installation um, and so on. And then of course we have the API reference, uh, nicely breaks down the various different pieces that your component code written in. Uh, I think the documentation here is all TypeScript, uh, but uh, the difference between TypeScript and JavaScript, especially newer ECMA script, isn't that far off. So it's hard to identify one versus the other. I think this documentation is all in TypeScript, but it's got good examples, walks you through what you need to know. So you've got good support from that end. Uh, if you are interested in checking this out, as I mentioned, the topic of support, uh, there is a Discord server out there. I will link this directly in the linked article down below. So if you want to check them out, do be sure to check out their Discord server. I'm actually starting to think that in some ways, me on this channel trying to showcase new technologies, I'm almost, there's more value in me sending people to their Discord site these days than to their website. So I'm going to try and make a concerted effort to point out Discord servers for projects like this. Uh, so if you want to learn a bit more or ask things about the community or so on, they do have an active Discord out there and they are doing regular releases. So 0.14 was just released yesterday. Uh, this whole thing has just come online a, a few days ago. And uh, by the way, thanks to Mr. Squarepeg uh, for pointing this one out to me. I, I think he was the one that raised it to my attention. And thank you guys in general for your recommendations. Even if I may not acknowledge you or reply to you or credit you after the fact, I got a lot going on and I don't necessarily remember who told me about something. But if you see something showed up and you recommended it to me, if I, even if I don't thank you directly for it, thank you for your recommendations. It makes my job a whole lot easier finding new and great technology to talk about to you guys when you guys hand them to me. Uh, so anyways, that is it. That is the road. Rogue Engine uh, at WebGL. I'll, I'll mention that now that we've got through the video and I'm, I'm not baiting you in. A WebGL powered, really cool Unity Lite like experience. Again, the only real negative here that I see right now is that it is not open source in a world where so many things are, but it is cross platform. It is streamlined and capable. I do like the TypeScript programming language and it's brand new. So we will see where this one goes. Well, let me know what you think about it. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.